this is aniket welcome to my channel uh, today we are going to do a execution question or analytical question uh, which is uh, recently been asked in google interviews the question goes this suppose you are trying to convince google execs to keep growing the youtube shorts product you can put three graphs in your slide deck what graphs uh, would you want to create now first of all uh, generally to start such a such a question uh, you first need to kind of clarify uh, at what stage the product is uh, obviously i have uh, stated some assumptions but uh, here uh, as likely answers from the interviewer but it is always good to uh, kind of clarify uh, with the interviewer uh, so yeah uh, I'm assuming that YouTube Shorts product launched at is launched uh, at a targeted user segment only. Uh, it is launched as a MLP product uh, at uh, Amazon. Uh, it we call it as MLP, minimum lovable product, and not MVP, uh, minimum viable product, because uh, MLP is like a higher bar than MVP. Uh, and then uh, I'm also assuming here that it has already achieved product market fit. If it has not, then uh, it's a different conversation. Uh, and then uh, there is a lot, there is a lot more trial and error needed, and it is even more difficult to convince uh, Google execs to keep growing the YouTube Shot product until there is a product. So as of now, let's let's assume it has achieved product market fit. And then now uh, we are at this uh, point where uh, we are at the inflection point, whether should we keep growing this or there's a, the or Google execs are saying, oh, we have an opportunity cost uh, and we want to grow the parent product, something of that sort. Uh, that's, I feel that's the question. So the three graphs uh, that I will choose, and this is generally uh, for any new uh, product, uh, generally retention is probably the most important uh, because uh, retention shows you the product's value to your uh, users or customers. Obviously, this YouTube Shorts product is uh, something that customers will uh, use it almost every day. Uh, it might be worthwhile to uh, show a graph of how many customers who have tried the product come back to use it after uh, one day, three days, seven days, one month, and, and how does that uh, uh, trend line taper. Uh, ideally, there shouldn't be any clips or anything. Uh, Retention should be uh, really, really high for a great value add product. Uh, yeah, initially, obviously, uh, retention might be not that great because your content is not there and there are no network effects initially. But still, uh, since it has been launched at a targeted user segment, and and obviously that means uh, we have ensured that we have the necessary content to uh, capture that user segment, uh, yeah, the product retention should be high for that user segment. So uh, product retention is important. Second would be engagement, and it is generally versus the parent product because execs would be looking at this from a opportunity cost point of view. So average time spent per user on YouTube shots versus on YouTube. Uh, so that, that would give the execs the uh, thought process of evaluating an opportunity cost, uh, what they're missing out on uh, on like, on the parent uh, product obviously uh, since we might not have a lot of content time spent might not be too high but this is exactly one more another story you can tell uh, that more the content more the engagement would be so ideally the engagement of youtube shorts uh, sh I'm, I'm i'm assuming that it is greater than youtube that's uh, and from what I know it is that's that would be great to show it to to XX and finally uh, I would also 
like to show uh, that YouTube Shorts as a product has neutral to positive impact on the parent product. Meaning, uh, there is no negative impact like cannibalization or anything to the parent YouTube product. Uh, so actually, uh, YouTube Shorts uh, complement YouTube and vice versa. Uh, and that's why that gives a reason why it should be kept under the YouTube umbrella. And uh, the, those two products actually help each other grow uh, instead of shutting down uh, uh, in YouTube or uh, spinning off YouTube Shorts into another kind of uh, org or company, right? So these will be my three main uh, graphs uh, in in my slide deck. Uh, obviously, a oh, few few if if at all we want to consider more, uh, I would love to show another graph as to how easy is it to scale this YouTube Shorts product. Uh, as compared to YouTube and how does the margins grow meaning for every dollar spent on YouTube shorts the bank for the buck that uh, is increases non-linearly and that is probably true for YouTube as well but it is even more uh, the slope is even more uh, steep for YouTube shorts uh, projecting into the future so that will convince uh but that's more of, of the future like is it easy or not for that you can do a b testing uh and and have a quick uh kind of a statistical analysis as to okay if if we expand to a couple of more to, how easy is it to expand to a couple of more uh segment user segments and then uh, can we maintain those kind of retention and uh, how easy it is to scale and and the, do our margins increase because of network effects and stuff but anyways so that's the fourth one i would i would think about but these will be my top three uh please let me know what you guys think uh please comment uh and let me know if i've missed anything critical here also uh please like share comment and subscribe uh, to this video uh, because uh, more such questions will be coming in future uh, yeah so uh, hope you liked it and uh, let me know if any other question you want me to solve thanks